Boom, freedom with the double three, AKA the urban cowboy. Over the next few weeks, I'll be raising the awareness of my question social enterprise, riding out with some of the UK's most loved names. Welcome to Celebrities in the Saddle. So, our first celebrity is none other than Sky Sports boxing commentator and former WBO world champion, Johnny Nelson. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go on a little route yeah. through St. Matthews. Yeah. Um, gonna just have a quick chat, yeah. you know, about yourself, you know, about what we're doing and um, just brighten up the place a bit. We've been on local lockdown for a while, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So it's nice. gives people something to smile about. Yeah. And, um, yeah, let's just enjoy your stalls. Urban riders through the city, you ready? Go for it. Is this a regular occurrence, sir? <laughs> uh, we wish it was a regular occurrence. That's uh, the whole reason why we're doing it, yeah. you know? Um, Urban Equestrian is a social enterprise that connects the inner city to the equestrian world. Mm -hmm. And um, through productions like this, we're hoping to raise awareness and raise funding so we can make it a regular recurrence. Are there, are there any, many, any other cities doing this? There's a place in um, Brixton called okay. Ebony Horse Club. Um, oh, there used to be a guy, um, yeah, actually it was a show jumper um, from Brixton. From Brixton? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Rasta yeah. man? Rasta guy, yeah. Oliver Ski. Oliver, 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 that's it. You know, Oliver, yeah. yeah. You know what? Small world. That's why we have to do what we're doing because the amount of people that ask me do you remember Oliver Skeet? Do you remember Oliver Skeet? And we need to move on from Oliver yeah, Skeet. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. You know what I mean? He yeah. can't be the only yeah. black Un person people know about on horse. Unfortunately, he you was know. probably the only, the, the only black person that had actually, uh, that Play was on TV good. on horseback. Yeah. Again, it's the whole reason why we're doing what we're doing, basically. Yeah. You know? We need to forget about Oliver Skeet. <laughs> as right. great as Oliver Skeet was. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah, man. Absolutely. So what, what's the aim then? It's the aim to get, to get the kids to let from all, all backgrounds, so that make them understand Absolutely. this isn't just an elite sport. We cater currently to about 100 kids every week. And we run... Um, from, from within the community? From within the wow. community, all from, yeah. all from the city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the majority of the youth STEM is black and Asian minority ethnic. Okay, boys and girls. Boys and girls. Yeah, yeah we've got loads of boys. The thing is, a lot of people don't understand that it takes representation as well as you know if you're trying to increase diversity yeah. and inclusion it's not just about diversity and inclusion it's also about representation you know the whole staff force has to look like you yeah, you have you to be able what? to look after people and you know what it can create kind of a stir as well because the whole the whole yeah. area is out yeah so you see see here yeah. this is my local barber shop what's up <laughs> 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 yeah, I suppose when you're when you're talking about the, 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 the bringing the community together, I always I always see boxing as a complete leveler. Doesn't matter, no matter how rich you are, how poor you are, boy, girl, black or white. Yeah. All you need is to walk in. You don't need money. Well, you pay your subs once a month. Yeah. But it's, it's to include everybody and everybody. You could walk in our gym. Yeah. And actually, right now, the great grandson of Sir Winston Churchill's in the gym. Okay. I get okay. some guy that did nine years. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is it's a level, but it yes. gets people together. It's a family, family yes. atmosphere. Yeah, and that's 100%. it. So, so and with an elite sport, or a sport that's seen to be elite, yeah. like uh, uh, horse like riding, horse riding. Yeah. Um, it, the message has got to get across to youngsters that, yeah. you know what, it's open to everybody and anybody. 100%. And then in doing that, um, I think it, it just bring the, it bring the kids on. And listen, you've seen them all in the, in the shops and everything. Yeah, you see. And, that, and that's the same with the boxing. It, it just gets everybody out. <coughs> 100%. Talking about boxing, mm -hmm. Johnny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was rather disappointed to see my boy Dylan White get his you know jaw what? spun, man. <laughs> you know huh? what? The the the, mo the the calmest guy of all that, what happened, is mm. Dylan. Dylan is is he's simplified it and it's just saying, look, it's a speed bump a speed bump in life. Yeah. I made a mistake, I made yeah. an error. And that's life itself. Yeah. And uh, and he's 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 brushed himself off, he's back in Portugal again yeah. now, Wait, already to train. Already. And what he does, if you look at him, he, he the same people he grew up with, the same community he grew up with, yeah. are the same people he's taken on his journey yeah. to uh to, 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 to let him let them see mm. what you see on TV isn't because it's on TV, it can be anybody can do it. Yeah. Just like this, what you're doing here. Hundred percent. You yeah. want you want these youngsters to see, you know what? Anybody yeah. can do it. You got a little little girl running over there just to come and see the horses. Oh yeah. And and, and, and that's to me, yeah. it's about touching the community. The thing with this is that we've done it from the ground up. Yeah, I, I like that. You I like I, mean? I like the sense uh, the sense of uh, yeah. community as well because yeah. 
a beautiful day. You know, everybody in the community yeah. is coming out. Don't We're in the middle of a house and estate. Yeah, proper. Honest, and you know, I'll tell you one thing about this housing estate as well. It's amongst the top 15 of the most deprived in the whole country. Get out. I swear. Really? Yeah. What we're interested in, we're not interested in riding, so to speak. The last thing we're actually interested in is even horses. We're interested in young people, mm -hmm. you know, and turning young people into responsible adults yeah. and giving them a sense of opportunity, you know what I mean? Yeah. You might find young people come to our pony club, you know, for all sorts of reasons, because they're interested in horses, some might come because their parents think it'd be good for them because they might be SEN. Yeah, 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 yeah. That. Some come because they're getting bullied at school and they've heard how great, you know, our pony club is. Yeah. Because if you come to our pony club, it's, it's, it's really amazing in that it's a very family orientated I like that. structure. Similar, because similar to boxing. Similar to boxing. Yeah, that's right. right. And the reason why it works with this is because we're not expected to actually be there. Yes. You know what I mean? So all of the youths are very accepting of any help anyone else who basically comes because mm -hmm. they're all like, you know what, we're not supposed to be here anyway. So yeah, come and join us, man, you know? The young people come, they do yard management, oh, nice. teach them how to fin f fix up yeah. their bedroom, yeah. you know? They do grooming, equine care. And then we also have theory sessions. No. Yeah, man. So we bring in a professional show jumper, a professional dressage uh, rider, a professional jockey, and we really do search for black or Asian or minority ethnic equestrians so that they look like them and they can, they can you know, aspire to be like them, so to speak. Yeah, so in terms of boxing, Johnny, you know, what's it like in terms of being able to mingle with so many different types of people uh, from different backgrounds, different cultures? So boxing, yeah. for me as a youngster growing up, mm. I'd seen so many things, so many types of people, so much wealth, so much poverty. Yeah. Uh, because our sport, uh, it touched everybody and anybody uh, because it is a leveller. Uh, I think boxing, I can only speak from, from my point of view, is one of the few sports where it was one of the most multicultural uh, uh, sports you could ever get involved in. Yeah. Because you just got to do it. You just yeah. got to want to do it. So it's even not about the politics that's happening in the offices, regardless of what personal people's personal views or opinions are, yeah. it could never affect actually getting on with it like this. We're riding. Once you're on horseback, you're riding. It's the freedom. It's, a, it's, what, it's the, how it makes you feel. Yeah. Boxing's one of those sports where, again, once you get in the ring, everybody's one. Yeah. Everybody's one. It's, there's an unwritten rule mm. of solidarity. Yeah. There's I've an unwritten rule. Yeah. And there's, yeah. So, so, so say, for instance, back in the day, you had uh, Chris Schubert and Nigel Ben hated each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see these men now as adults, as fathers, yeah, yeah. as inspirers, yeah. getting on with each other yeah. because that was their common bond. Mike Tyson so, and Holyfield. Mike Tyson and Holyfield, right Mike now. You, the money yeah, still yeah. Can get past that, that's right, it? that's right. You've got you've got Dylan White, Anthony Joshua. Yes. Yeah. I can go back in history, uh, George, uh, George Groves and Carl Froch. Yeah. I can always find you uh, and go back in history, but, but it's that one bond, no matter how much is said or done. Yeah that brought us all together. Yeah, and and we, we do a show <coughs> called the, the Gloves Are Off and we bring guys together and I see it, yeah. I recognise yeah. it. And, and I smile because I think I was once you. Yeah. Uh, and so it brings the community, it brings people together, it's affordable. Yeah. And that to me is most important. Right. I like seeing things like this because you've literally brought a community out. The 100%. kids are walking out into the street just like boxing. 100%. Uh, uh, Brendan used to take us to, Brendan Ingram, my, my former trainee, passed yeah. away, God rest his soul. Yeah. He used to take us to the local working men's club okay. uh, on a Sunday. And uh, okay. on, on a Sunday, and what would happen is, Good boy. Um, he'd get us to, to sh spar with each other, yeah. and then he'd put the gloves on, he'd say to people that are in the audience, put your gloves on, Come on, you know, get in the ring. Yeah. Well, you hey, know, it's the only place you can hit a black man and not get in trouble. Well, but what yeah, he was doing is bringing the community yeah. together. Yeah. People were laughing, people were joking, it inspired yeah. people to get involved. Yeah. And so it was taking it to the street and they were packed out every weekend. Mm -hmm. So so as we're riding through here, I see people coming out, left, right, center, kids, yeah. even adults coming out. Yeah. This is a good thing. Tell me, Johnny, in terms of racism yeah. in the sporting world, yeah. how do you find tackling that on different levels. Like again, you know, I found that if you, if, you, if you understand that, you see black equestrians, yeah. we make up less than 1% mm -hmm. of the equestrian world, yeah? But why is that? 
Why do you think that is? See, when I was 14, uh -huh. that's when my dad decided to take the whole family back to Antigua, yeah? Yeah. And that's how I got into horses, because my uncle had a race yard. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have the opportunity over here to mm -hmm. get into horses, yeah? When I come back here now, at 19, as a qualified horse trainer, mm -hmm. one of the youngest in Antigua, at 17, I came back to England and I found out we was less than 1%. Now, that was over 20 years ago. And how many people like yourself, with the same complexion as yourself, mm -hmm. did you see like yourself? when you came back at 17? None. All right. None, brother. And, and so, so... But listen, fast forward that. Yeah. 20 years later, we're still less than 1%. But again, my question is, why do you think that is? Do you think it's racism? Do you think it's people not know, realising, you know what? It's actually open to anybody and everybody. Yes, there are elements of... of uh, there are racist elements, but yeah. what I'm saying is... And you could have dollars for this. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, mm. is it fair to tie everybody with the same brush? No. I think, you know, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing today. Yeah. Because I think it, it takes... You have to put yourself out there, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, listen, I could have been the person that decided to turn my back on my community yeah. and just go into the show jumping world mm -hmm. or the dressage world and just be that person that I really ain't. I said no. I said I'm going to be myself and I'm going to bring horses to the hood. A lot of people don't know that it was the therapy of horses that got me out of the badness I was up to. Yeah. Because if you know my story, outside of the horses, my story is not a very good story, so to speak. It's like a Caribbean mafia story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the horses is the good part of it. So that's the therapy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that therapeutic element. Yeah that allows kids to escape their own realities in terms of some of the environments that they're coming from. I like that because I know with the horses, um, whenever I've ridden, sometimes if you just want to rest, sometimes if you just want to rest your mind, yeah. what you do is just get on the horse. Yes. Get out on the horse bike That's it. and it makes all the difference. Yeah. And, that, and horses can sense that. Big time. They can sense, they can sense if you're afraid of them. Yeah. They can sense if you can ride. Yeah. Uh, if and if they don't feel like it, they just tip you out. Um, and it, it does make a, a big difference. So, so uh, for a lot of kids, it just probably tell, helps them know how to deal with uh, deal with different situations. With boxing, <coughs> you'll find that I always found that doing a simple thing like doing my footwork every day, yeah, repetitive. Yeah. yeah. You know, getting the time you can listen to the timing, watching yourself hit the bag, shadow boxing. Yeah. That it's just you. So, say for instance, you go out on a hack, it's just you and a horse. Yeah, man. When you're in the ring in the gym. Boxing is one old because it's a very lonely sport. Yeah. Because you've got to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning to go running. You got to get you got you're the one that's gonna push yourself to go and train when you don't want to train. True. But it's the endorphin it releases, how relaxing it is when yeah. you're done. Yeah. It's addictable. And that's why you unfortunately, if boxing is that addictable, what happens is uh, when you get to a certain age, when it's time to give up, you can't give up. Yeah. Because it was the only boxing for me was the only place I felt safe. Okay. And it sounds mad. Yeah, I went to the gym. It was the only place I felt it felt stable for me. Yeah. It was the only place where I thought this is home. Yeah. And even now, even now, I'm a big old man. I walk yeah. in the gym, yeah. and it's the only place I feel settled. Yeah. Many people that were in my gym that if they didn't box, yeah. they'd be in prison. I know people that were in my gym that went to prison because they fell out of boxing. Yeah. I know, I, I know, I know. Brian Anderson. He's the first Britain's first black prison governor. He was troublesome when he was in the gym. And Brendan said, you're either going to be behind the bars or in front of the bars. Okay. He was that bad. This guy ended up being the Britain's first black prison governor. Brian Anderson, British middleweight champion. He actually is a great example mm. to what can be done and how life can be turned around. Boxing made a massive difference. Like this yeah. Yeah. can make a massive difference. Okay, so Johnny, are you doing anything to encourage, uh, you know, Youngsters coming through. I, that's, yeah. why, that's why I'm smiling when I come down here and, I, and I'm smiling at the reaction you're getting coming through because, because I get you. I get where you're coming from. And, and I do the same with a lot of kids in, uh, within the area. Sheffield. Brendan did, in Sheffield. Okay, okay. Brendan did it towards. Yep. He take us to a factory where people are doing mad 12 hour shifts. Uh, he take us to, to, to uh, high end businesses where you see CEOs of companies. So he shows us. He shows us a hard time, he shows wealth. He takes it to a football ground where you see footballers driving off in the big flash cars. So he's, he's giving us a view to say, look, there's so much more to life than just yeah. being stuck in your area. Big time. And big then time. he takes us to a prison. Big time. And, and we go in the prison and, it, it, and, and 
they, they'd let us go in the prison, speak to the prisoners. And what basically what they did was it showed us how he, he was showing us how life could be, couldn't be, should be, you know, and, and, and giving us the choices, opening our horizons. Would so be. and this is what you're doing here. You you you're opening the eyes of the youngsters coming through to make him think, I could do that. We've got a young man. He's come through our organisation. He's at the British Racing School right now. Wicked. He graduates in one week. Then he's going to a race yard to prepare his life as a jockey. Yeah. Yeah, man, 19 years old. Really? This time last year, he never rid a horse in his life. Really? Never. So so what did, had you, how did he get into it? He contacted me on Facebook. Yeah. Saying how he'd love to come and volunteer. Yeah. Told him to come down. He's one of those motorbike tear away kids. Ah, so. Yeah? yeah. Always running away from police on yeah, motorbike. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So he turned up at our stables on a motorbike. So I kind of put two and two together thinking if he That's can ride it. a motorbike like that, uh, he right. must be good on a horse. Yeah. Slapped him on a horse. A very easy riding one. Yeah. First question he asked us was, you got anything a bit faster? Yeah, man. So within about three months, we had him galloping. Nice. So I called my contacts in the British Racing School. Yeah. They came down and watched him. Yeah. Signed him up straight away. Yeah. Now he's at the British Racing School in Newmarket. You know what? That, you, you, 14 you, weeks. Yeah. So you see that. You see boxing. You see people like Lewis Hamilton trying to lead the way for. Yeah. F1. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's yeah. what I'm saying. And he was the same. He was yeah. the same. And, and people have got to understand. Yeah. He, people have got to understand that uh, uh, just have a go. Yeah. It's, have a go. It's, it's available to everybody and everybody. Freedom with a double tree. That's how he does this, yeah? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, nice one, Dre. Nice one to eat. Oh, nice, please. Good boy. Good boy. boy.